So everybody's been after me for years uh, to do a vacuum. And um, I hate cleaning interiors. I hate vacuuming. Uh, so you would think as much as I hate it, I should probably figure out some really sophisticated system for being on the wall. Uh, problem is, it'd be, it'd be kind of like, you know, it's like, I couldn't make a YouTube channel if I didn't like cameras so much. You know, I have to, you have to have the, the interest and the appetite to go looking and chasing. And I've kind of gotten on the, that wagon three or four times and, uh, and uh, every time I start to head down that path, I'm just disappointed and, uh, and, and so I, I, I needed to make a decision. You know, somebody has to decide what to do. You know, and for especially for you know, obsessed garage, you have to decide. Somebody just has to pick something, and so this vacuum you're looking at here, the Flex, which we I decided, you know, we just need to put this thing in the store. This sucker's been with me ever since I started selling Flex tools. I ordered one of everything that Flex has, uh, and uh, anything to do with detailing. Uh, back when I became a dealer. And uh, I bought the, this is the nine gallon and they also have a 12 gallon. Uh, I bought both of them and they just kind of hung around and I just started using them. And, uh, and they kept hanging around and I've had vacuums come and go for the last uh, couple of years. And uh, this thing just keeps, keeps, keeps sitting here and I keep using it. I've been using this thing and it doesn't look like I've been using it. It's held up really well, but I've been using this thing for, um, for years. And, uh, and so, you know, Tommy was after me saying, look, why don't we just put the flex in the store? It clearly you like the thing because it keeps, you keep using it. You know, I've had rigids come through and I've had, you know, some, some stuff from, um, from various companies come through here, a lot of cordless stuff uh, that just doesn't hold up. Uh, this one's great for cleaning the Swiss tracks flooring, cleaning bare flooring. I've taken this home, like when I had construction dirt, you know, vacuuming the, the, the bare concrete or vacuuming tile. I've even vacuumed carpet with, with this darn thing. Uh, and, uh, and, and it, it just really does quite well. I'll show you the things I dislike about it. There are a few, uh, but, uh, so what I plan to do is since I've been using this thing for so long, it's just, let's just take it apart here and let's look inside of it see what uh, I haven't replaced filters I've only replaced the bag one time and it, that is for at least two years uh, so I, I've, I've only replaced the bag once and I've used it I'm telling you I've used this thing twice a week for you know sometimes more than that for multiple years so uh, let's tear it apart and I'll show you the things that I bolted on it we'll make sure we have these accessories available in the store uh, and, uh, and explain to you why you would spend 600 bucks on a vacuum. Uh, there's a lot of things on here that we're paying for that you're probably not going to use, but you know, it has it. And that's part of why when you start buying these extractors, you have to, uh, you have to start, you just have to have to pay extra for them. So the hose, this is one of the things I simultaneously love and don't love. What I don't love about it is, uh, and this is for, I'm sure this is for vacuuming, you know, sanders, things like that. There's this little band on the side here. And what I should do is just put some super glue on the darn thing so it stays. But when I'm, when I'm using it, usually when I'm using it to clean the floor, I'll show you the, the, one of the accessories that you can get for this. Um, this thing, I'm always obsessing over this thing opening. You know, you can bypass the suction or a portion of the suction or adjust the level of suction by opening the bypass on the side here. And for us, what we're doing, you never want to, you never want that to be open. And I haven't found any way to, you know, to, to change this. I mean, I don't think that they have an adapter. Maybe I'll look into this now that I'm saying this, but I don't think they have a piece to replace this thing maybe they do that's what i need to look at so i'm not sure uh, what i should what i'm what i'm thinking about doing as we t as we speak here i have actually never thought about doing anything until right now um i should i should just put a little bead of super glue on here and just glue this thing so so that way i don't i don't accidentally open it now there's a there's a two-step two-stage clicking function so most of it's just in my head that I'm going to open the thing and I'm always checking it when I'm vacuuming. Uh, but this, this little adapter piece here, the reason why they have this is so that way you can put on various, uh, various adapters to do different types of tools. 
Again, we're not going to be using this. When I say tools, I'm talking you know, orbital sanders and woodworking tools and things like that. Um, and that's part of the reason why I think this thing does so well because um, you know, it's designed for doing a much more sophisticated task than what we're using it for, which is the darn theme of this whole garage. You know, I've got studio monitors that are designed for recording studios. I've got, you know, tools that I have no business owning. You know, we have a lift that is designed for dealerships. You know, pretty much everything in here, the pressure washers, the, you know, the, 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 the tire changing equipment, all this stuff is professional grade. So why wouldn't we do the same thing with the vacuum? So this piece, this piece, this, this, and the floor thingy, get this thing over here. This is part of an accessory package that um, you know, uh, the Tom, Tommy wasn't even aware. I said, hey dude, like this stuff doesn't come with it. So as he's developing, putting the product together, um, I had to remind him like these things were, were accessories. Same thing with the giraffe tool holder, which we'll talk about in a second here. Uh, I've bought to date at least 12 different companies versions of crevice tools and accessory tools like the you know the brush the brush tool the crevice tool the flat you know, carpet cleaner um, this uh, this floor floor tool um, that really works well for bare floors or so even swiss tracks um, i bought dozens of them and they're terrible this is a real opportunity in the market. I don't know why there's some of these you know, vacuum specialty companies or retailers that specialize in vacuums all over the place. They're all over the internet, but yet none of them have seemed to have gone out and developed. I mean, this, this is something that needs to be developed. Where these are the best that I've found, and they're just from Flex, and they're the OE ones that you can buy as an accessory package for, for this vacuum. And they're the, by far the best I've found, and there's still tons of room for improvement. But I think you'll find that when cleaning cars, if you're a detailer or you're just a guy in the garage, uh, that this thing, uh, this thing really does kill it. You know, I, I do have aspirations to have some, some uh, Festool vacuums as well. Um, they're in the same ballpark or a little bit more expensive than this. Um, but I, can I just keep coming back to this thing? Um, I've tried to buy the, the Festool stuff and they're just not available ever. Every time I head down that path, it seems like they're not available. It's frustrating to me where these, you know, Flex has had these in stock. And of course, now I decide to do it. And of course, they don't have them in stock. <clears throat> but I, I, again, I think this is one of those hang around products that I, and I like it. And so I think we should probably, you know, have it, have it in the store. So then the, the hose does come with the, um, you know, with, with, the, with the package, with, with the, the, um, the vacuum. So it comes with a, a couple of bags and it comes with a, the hose and that's essentially it. It comes with these little, little pieces here. So what we'll do, let's take the thing apart and then we'll put it together and I'll show you how I store the thing. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I like this vacuum is how you can kind of put it together and, and put it in the corner and, and store it. So I've never taken this thing apart, so we're going to do this together for the first time on camera. Another nice thing about this thing is, you know, I'll, I'll carry it to my house or like throw it in the back of the truck or we'll carry it over to, uh, to OGHQ. And uh, because I have the giraffe tool holder, I'll usually just grab the handle and it's super sturdy. Like every time I grab a rigid, you know, like my rigid vacuums from Home Depot, half the time the darn clips pop off and the thing drops on the ground and explodes everywhere. I'm sure many of you have done that too, or even shop vacs. This is not going anywhere. The clip system here is very German. Um, I'm almost certain that this is, you know, Flex doesn't make this vacuum, Nilfisk makes it. And so what we did is we went to Nilfisk and said, you know, I'd like to sell the Nilfisk. Well, the Nilfisks are like two, three, four hundred dollars more than this one. It's the same freaking thing. Uh, and they have like one little feature that I couldn't detect when I had it here testing it. Uh, and so this is the thing that pushed us over the edge when we got all the Nilfisk versions of this. Uh, there's also a Milwaukee version of this. There are like, uh, Nilfisk has like 10 or 12 different OEs that they make this vacuum for. 
and the flex one seemed to be the best pricing and has the best accessory kit uh, and so I decided to just I already have the flex I have lots of long-term testing with the flex so we'll keep using it the casters on this are also great you know it's super nimble pliable so you know as I'm walking around the garage putting it back into place you know it rolls on Swiss tracks well and it's you know, the, another thing that I hate about the rigids are the stupid casters. Having the fixed wheels on the back is, is super important. I have, a, I, know, I have a rigid next door from Home Depot that has fixed wheels and that one still doesn't work well. It's because the front wheels on this, the front casters are much, much more capable. It does have a lock, so you can lock it in place if you don't want to accidentally drag it and smack it into your fender. I just now realize there's a lock. I've never once used that, so it, it's there if you uh, if you needed it. But both both of the front casters have locks on them to kind of put it in place. I think that'd be more of a you know again sander feature. You're gonna kind of put it in place there. Um, the uh, the the other thing that's kind of weird about this is uh, that'll it'll drive you crazy because you're you're trying to figure it out. There's a um, there's a tool mode, and then there's a non-tool mode, right? So you have the power on the front, and it's very clearly denoted, but for some reason when I'm fast dadding it, and I don't think, I just start turning the thing on, I'm like, is it this way or that way? Every freaking time, I can't remember which is which. So there's a tool suction mode, um, or, there, or, or I'm sorry, there's a, there's a general suction mode, which you would just turn all the way up, and then there's the tool on-off mode, and th this thing has, which will also, I wish someone would have told me this in the beginning, I couldn't figure out, I thought something was wrong with it, and I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate it here in a minute. But there's the regular function, just regular suction on, and then there's the, um, I forget what they call it, where the filter purges itself. And it does like a, like a double puff. And that's to uh, help with, uh, with blockage from you know, sawdust and stuff like that, which of course we're not too concerned with. So most of the time I'm just gonna turn it to the on position. Uh, we don't need to turn it to the left or counterclockwise because we're generally not using the tool power adapter there. Uh, so it has a max 550 watts. So you could plug something else into the front of it. Not sure what you would, we would do that for detailing wise, but if you had like dual tools, like maybe you got this out with your Metrovac or your big boy or something like that. I don't know what the power consumption of that is, but maybe instead of getting a power cord or two power cords out or extension cords, you could just plug it into the front of this and have, you know, have a system set up. So this piece here, uh, I put this on when I first got it, and then I lost the pieces that were originally here, so I've just left it on the whole time. This is a giraffe tool holder. The reason why I left it on, it's an accessory we'll put in the store in case people want it, but I've, uh, I've put this thing on here a lot, so when I'm rolling around, or I'll wrap the hose up on here, but this is designed to hold like their, their, their like wall sander, their wide, their wall drywall sander, their concrete sander, stuff like that. Um, so that's what this accessory is for. So it doesn't come with this. It also doesn't come with this handle. This handle is like a $25, $30 accessory, something like that. I, I think it depends on where you're gonna store it. If you're gonna try to put it in a cabinet or something like that, if you have a tall closet, uh, you may not want this handle. Um, so we'll have it in the store as an accessory, but I don't think, not everybody's gonna want this handle. I like it because it does make it easier to kind of roll around and put it into position. It's pretty darn good how great the casters are and the placement of the power cord you know I don't find myself getting all tangled up like I do on a regular shop vac with four you know regular casters it just doesn't doesn't happen so the power cord storage is kind of funky uh, where it comes off the back here I don't I wouldn't say I love it but it does work and um, you know I find it less annoying than try to wrap the cord on top of the, on top of the, uh, the vacuum. Uh, and I, th I want to say it's a 25 foot power cord. We'll have all the specs in, in the thing. So oftentimes, um, it's a little too short, like especially in a garage this big. Uh, and so I like to keep either a 50 foot or sometimes a 20 foot pro lock cord. Uh, and so 
The reason why a prolock cord I think is important for the vacuum is because I'm always pulling the darn thing around by the hose and then the vacuum comes unplugged. And so you know, we have these in the store. Uh, I would recommend you get these just, just for regular use around the house. Uh, and you know specifically for the vacuum and, and actually this is a 50 footer um, I would actually recommend a, uh, a 25 footer we sell these in black and, and this blue uh, but when you when you plug in it locks in place and so when you're pulling the vacuum around you won't there's nothing annoys me more than when I'm trying to clean the floor and the thing comes unplugged and pulls out of the wall uh, and so having a, a another 25 foot cord on hand would be would be recommended if you have a really big garage or a hanger or something you're cleaning maybe you want a 50 footer but having a pro lock cord handy for not just the vacuum but for all tasks in the garage is super useful i use the um, my power cord reels which i've modified and put the pro lock cords on uh, i use those with this vacuum all the time so i very rarely plug this directly into the wall i'm almost always putting a a, a you know putting it into plugging it into a uh, extension cord all right, so let's take the top off. I want to look at the filters. There are, there are three filters on this thing. So there's one charcoal looking filter on the side here. So let's take this off. I've only, like I said, I've only changed the bag one time. So I've only ever taken this thing off once. That's another nice thing is that I haven't had the need to tear this thing apart. Uh, wow, it's super clean inside. So I haven't had the need to um, you know, like a darn, one of those darn crappy vacuums, you're constantly taking the thing apart. You know, it's because it gets clogged up and it's problematic. Just get the power cord out of the way here. Should have wrapped it back up. So, in here, I want to take this off and see what, what it looks like after you know, multiple years of use, see what the HEPA filter looks like. So there is the filter on the side here, this charcoal filter. Oh, there's two. That's why it wouldn't come off. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've never replaced this. So this, this looks to be, this is a washable filter. And we'll make sure for those of you that are really, you know, using this thing, you know, probably more. Uh, now, I, I guess, Again, I did all kinds of construction in here in the Arn building and use this thing, so um, I guess you'd be hard pressed to use it more aggressively than I do or beat it up more than I did. And then here's the paper filter in the back, which looks super clean. Again, I, I'm telling you, I've never replaced this. So this piece comes off here to get to this filter. Wow, looks great. Look at that. This must have to do something with dust extraction. Um, this could be the exhaust filter. I think that's what this probably is. And so one of the beauties of this vacuum, even if you do have a clean, well-functioning you know, old shop vac or a Craftsman or the rigid version from, you know, from Home Depot, you always get that little bit of that little bit of dust plume. Even when I change the darn filters all the time, that does not happen with these things. I'm telling you, it's just not, I don't know if it's not possible. It's probably has to do with that filter there. So we'll stock these filters, but clearly, I mean, I'm, I, wish I, I wish I could go look up the date of when I bought this thing. Let me look at my spreadsheet here, just so I can give you a reasonably accurate as, uh, assessment. Can I look at my spreadsheet and look at the created date of my original order? Now, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16 different accessories that they sell for this vacuum. And they're all, it's like SAC, SAD slash C36AS, uh, SHC32 by 4M, uh, VCE dash AP. What the heck does any of that mean? So what I did, and they don't have a catalog, uh, and so I just ordered it all, and it all came here, and so those are the accessories that have made the cut. So this is the, the system, we'll set this up, the system, give you an option to buy it the way that I've set it up with all, with all these things. So, um, how do I create this? Excel, 
I'm sure there's a created date. Anyway, I don't want to look that up. It's, it's multiple years. So what was I just doing? Oh, I want to take the HEPA filter off and see what that looks like. I'm trying to stay out of the way for the camera here. This just this super German, you know, this whole thing. This looks every part of it looks German. I'm starting to fall in love with this vacuum even more than I liked it enough to put my stamp on it. I haven't spent this much time with it because I never thought this would be the one. This has always just, just been a utility, a workhorse for me. Jeez, we're clearly not using this thing hard enough. Like there is not a lick of dust or anything on this thing. There's a bug in there. Wow, that's incredible. I thought for sure it'd be like, okay, it's time to replace this. There's a little O-ring on there. Yeah, Milfisk. That's funny. I wonder if there's any. Let me do this. <clears throat> this and then this will hold it into position but I believe they HEPA filters like if you, you have to be careful like a HEPA filter doesn't work properly if it's damaged unlike a traditional like little regular paper filter yeah this thing's this thing's great then you can see why this thing's 600 bucks a, take apart your your old shop vac that was a hundred bucks. And you'll see a substantial difference. So the wet, this is wet dry. You'd have to take the, this bag out and you'd have to do the, the plastic bags or take the bag out altogether. Because of how clean this thing is, I, I do believe you need a bag regardless. And I'm telling you, I just bought these bags. We were thrown for a loop because the bag looks different than all the pictures on the Flex website. It looks much nicer, but it has a picture of the vacuum on the bag, so it's clearly the right one. And I replaced the bag just, just like a couple weeks ago, like for the first time. And I'm telling you, I've been sucking up all kinds of crap. comes off here. It's a tight, tight seal. So here's the fleece bag. You know, a bunch of, bunch of gunk in there. That's clearly the correct bag because we have the picture of this exact vacuum on it. So they do make a 12 gallon version, which I'm not even going to carry. It doesn't make any sense. I'm telling you, this one is plenty big enough. You're not going to need anything bigger for doing any kind of detailing or car stuff. Even if, even if you were at a shop, you know, that to, this is this is plenty. In fact, I'd almost like it to be a little bit smaller because we don't, we don't, you don't need the extra capacity. So that's it. Pretty simple stuff. Pretty simple construction. You have the three filters, which clearly you're never going to need to replace. Um, and that's it. So let's put it back together and let's uh, clean the M3 while we're at it. Show you how it works. We'll do a little Swiss tracks cleaning. Well, boom. I'm 
because I'm fancy, screw you guys, I'm getting a hose reel out. Powerful reel. I don't care if you don't have that, I do, so I'm using it because I hate doing it. I'm telling you, I just get this feeling of dread. Like, ugh, ugh, I'll wash my car all day long and love every second of it, but when it comes time to do some cleaning of the interior, I hate it so much. This is why I should get moving and do like a full sophisticated boom pole or on wall vacuum system here in the garage. While we're here and out and out and open, here's how I clean my switch tracks. I use this guy. Let's get this seat out of the way, stop being lazy. Let's get to work. Turn the thing on. So this is the normal, um, Normal number one position, so I was wrong. The one position is what gives you the, the, that suction pop, which we won't need, because the filter, it's a way to clean the filter and make sure that you don't end up with uh, you know, sawdust clogging it up. So we go to off, and now it just runs a normal operation. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm always hitting this darn thing. And then, Straighten it out. And this is how I vacuum the garage. It'll suck up all the junk through the tile. I do this pretty often, so there's not a lot of dirt in here. Actually, Mike, come on over here and we'll show them. We got a little bit of dirt in my garage. It's rare. Oh, hear that? Hear that? This thing is awesome. So that's just the rocks and stuff from me driving in here. I mean, there's a wood chip right there. Thing's freaking good, man. Maybe I do really like this thing. I was trying to talk myself out of it. So what I would normally do, I'd stay organized and just go tile to tile and suck up all that dirt, all that crap underneath the Swiss tracks. Dude, there's a lot of dirt under here. So it, it cleans it cleans the top because you got the brush. It cleans the top of the tile. And um, this little drag helps make sure um, you get good suction, I think. But it just works extremely well for the tiles. I thought, you know, I have used this a thousand times and it still looks pretty darn good. Typical German quality. All right, let's clean the interior of the car. You get the point. So sometimes I'll go around and just spot clean with this, where I see stuff on top of the floor, but then other times I'll just go and do each tile and suck up all the dirt underneath it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there's some dirt on the other side. Let's go to the other side. Look at that, there's dirt. Sometimes I get a little dirt. Not a lot, but a little. I like those goofy lines that people like. I don't like that. 
It's dirt. I feel like, you know, again, when you buy a $100 vacuum, they just lose their capability over time. Even if you clean them out, I feel like like my rigid vacuums that I have, I'm always having to clean them and then they never work the same as they did when they were new. This sucker works great forever. That's it. That's a Mormon level interior cleaning. What do I do with the brush? Right there. Has these little storage buddies. Right here, I'm gonna put these things in. I need to have three of them, but I have two of them. Clean. Now you can't say that I didn't show you how it works. It freaking works. If I say it works, it works. End of story. It's good. And then what I do, you know, to store it, first thing I do, grab the power cord, I'm gonna put it back through the, the holder. So, I think what I normally do is do the old, the old over the elbow trick, like this. Take it here, take it back through the back here. I'll fold it like this. This thing's pretty tight, so just get one on, get your fingers out of the way. And then put the other one on like that, nice and clean. It took me 10 seconds. And then take the hose, and there's these hose clamps underneath. This and then you can do another wrap if you want underneath. Put this actually, what do I need? I think I normally do it now. I'm confusing myself. I want to do this like that, like that, and then the reason why I like this little draft holder. this where it stays nice and tight and I take the thing see how good this thing rolls it rolls nice and straight unlike your stupid shop fact that wobbles around everywhere and I park that little bro and good to go and I'll take the, uh, the floor tool and I normally just hide it behind my air compressor here if I want to need it That's the flex vacuum. I know you're crapping a brick and you're gonna yell at me in the comments, there's so much money, blah, 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 for one percenters. Well, sorry, you know, I work real hard and I have a real nice vacuum. You should try to get one too. So anyway, that's the flex, that's the VCE33. You don't want the 44, uh, which is the 12 gallon capacity. We can get it for you if you want. I mean, you can probably just go online and get it. Um, I sell it at whatever Flex's list price. My hope is that I'm able to provide some value by making you better videos and giving you, you know, my take on things and uh, you know, providing you some information that you may not have otherwise known. And so it's super helpful if you buy it from us. And I do ask that you pay for shipping, which is very different than most retailers, but um, I'm not a retailer. I'm a you know, curator, if you, call it, you want to call it that. So good news is my M3 is clean. Took us 10 seconds and um, now we can go on with the rest of our day knowing that uh, my interior detailing is done. Stop eating cheeseburgers in your car and you won't have to do any detailing. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for your support. Go to obsessedgarage.com, hit us up, support at obsessedgarage.com if you have any questions. That's the Flex Vacuum, it's pretty sweet. It's even better than I thought it was, even having torn it apart and gotten a little bit 
more detail of it here today than I've gotten to this point. I just haven't had to. I haven't had to do any maintenance to it. Just freaking works. I wipe it down occasionally. Usually I just vacuum it with it. That's all I do. So thanks for watching. See you soon.